Previously, we've only been drawing opaque characters in our game, and now we want to draw transparent characters, except transparent characters have the problem where if you draw them in the wrong order, you get like this, where the, the part that's overlapping, it, it displays them both, when really it should do like that, so you know that which one is in front. Now you can see that this block is in front. The reason it does that, the reason it has this problem with transparent characters has to do with something called the Z-buffer, which I'm not going to get into too much. It's actually pretty neat and you can go look it up. Um, but we're going to look at how to fix that problem and that's by using a painter's algorithm where you paint your objects from back to front. So let's say I'm going to make up some numbers here. I'm, I have nine entities, one, two, three, four, five in random order, six, seven, eight, let's put nine all the way over here. And these are my nine entities and we have to draw them from, from back to front. So in other words, draw the one that's farthest away first, just like a painter does. That's why it's called a painter's algorithm. So that it looks like it's in the back and the things that are in the front cover up the things that are in the back. So we're going to assume that these nine entities, numbered one through nine, represent how far away from the camera uh, they are. So nine is the farthest away and one is the, the nearest. So a naive algorithm to implement the uh, painter's algorithm would go like this. You would, you would iterate through your list, you would look through every item and you would find the farthest one. Here it is. You draw that first. And then you have to look through every item again to find the second farthest one and there it is and then you have to look through every item again to find the third farthest one there it is then you draw that then you draw the fourth far largest one and so on problem with this is it's really slow if you have nine things in your list well let's say we have n things in our list okay we have n things if we have n things in our list then we have to look through each of those n things every time we want to draw something and we have n things so we end up doing n times n operations, or in other words, n, n squared operations. But we can do this a lot faster. And it's with a method called merge sort. Merge sort. And that's what we're going to learn today. Merge sort is a type of algorithm called divide and conquer, okay? which means that you divide your data set into, oops, into two pieces here I'm dividing it into five on this side and four on that side, but you could divide it four and five, you could do it either way. You divide your, your data into smaller and smaller pieces and then later you put all those pieces together, okay? So I divide it into a five and four and then I'm gonna keep dividing it recursively. Recursively means I, you, just, you just continue to do it. Oh man, I hate when that little thing shows up. What is that, shift? Why is it? Why is it saying that? I don't even know. It just shows up randomly sometimes. So you keep dividing and now I have a group of three and a group of two. So this, this yellow group right here would have nine, six, four, one, seven. Uh, and then this third group has three, five and the last group has two, eight. Now I'm gonna keep dividing until I have groups of either two or one. So now I've divided this group of three into a group of two and a group of one this four right here. And then here's this group of one seven, so that already has two, and this group of three five, and this group of two eight. Now I have groups of two and one, and those are called base cases, right? So with base cases, it, they're really easy to sort. So for example, with this nine six, all I have to do, I feel like this, I say that a lot, all I have to do, if they are if the left one is smaller than the right one, then swap them. So nine, six, I'm gonna swap, I'm gonna get six, nine. Okay, and if the left one is already smaller, then you just leave it alone. This four, so if your base case only has one in it, then it's already sorted. This only has one in it, I'm mean, sorry, this has two in it, but they're already sorted, these are already sorted, and these are already sorted. So now I have these five base cases, six, nine, four, one, seven, three, five, and two eight that are sorted and I'm gonna do the conquer portion of my algorithm now by combining these together 
And the trick to combining together is to always look on the left. I'm gonna combine these two together. I can only combine two at a time together, but I'm gonna combine this six nine with this four, okay? And I look at the left of each sub array and I grab the smaller of the two. So I'm gonna look at six and four. I'm gonna get the smaller of the two and that'll be four. So I'll write four right here. Now, I've gotten rid of one array entirely, so I'm just gonna copy the, the two, the other two over the six and the nine. And I'll bring this one seven down and then let's do the same thing over here. What is the smaller of two and three? Well, it's two, so I'll use that first. Then what's the smaller of three and eight? Well, it's three, so I'll go there next. Cross that off. What's the smaller of five and eight? It's five. And what's the smaller, well, eight is the only one we have left, so we'll just do that. Shift, why does it say that? I don't even know. Now let's combine these two guys right here. We have, uh, again, let's let's continue to look on, on the left-hand side of each subarray. So we're looking at four and one. One is the smaller of four and one, so we're gonna use that. Then four and seven, four is the smaller. Then six and seven, six is the smaller. Then nine and seven, seven is the smaller, and then finally nine. <clears throat> there we go. Two, three, five, eight. I'm just going to bring that down. It's already sorted. And now the last step is to combine these two final ones. So let's do that. Keeping with the theme, we're going to look at one and two. One is the smaller one. And then four and two, two is the smaller one. And then three and four, three is the smaller one. Four and five, I think you get the point by now. Five and six, six and eight, seven and eight, eight and nine, and then nine. And bammo, we have a sorted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data set. And so we can start here, draw this guy first because he's the farthest, and then work our way to the left, and then we'll be drawing things nearer and nearer to the camera. Let's look at how fast this takes to run. Uh, we have, how many base cases do we have? We actually have log base two of n base cases, where n is the size of our array. I'm gonna link a Khan Academy video that might explain, help explain logarithms to you. They're really easy. But it just means how many times do we divide our array by two, uh, and that's log two of n. And Every time we merge our two subarrays together, we have to look at every element. So I'm gonna put another n right here. n times n log n. n times log n. Now, why is this so much faster? It's because log n, log base two of n, is always much smaller than n is. Here we have n times n, here we have n times log n, and since log n is always smaller, this algorithm is going to be a lot faster. So let's go to the code. I, I think we're ready for the code, so let's go and implement this algorithm. First thing first, I'd like to show you what happens if we don't have a sorted uh, transparency render list. We're going to comment out that line of code and go into the game. As you can see, the monsters, you can see through them. You can see the environments through the monsters, but you can't see the monsters through each other because they're rendering in the wrong order. We have to render them with the one in the back first. And so let's let's do that. We're gonna uncomment that function so that it will sort it. And here it is, merge sort render sublist. We're gonna implement the rest of this function. I'll walk you through it real quick. I'm not gonna write the whole thing because it's really long, but we went through most of it in the video. Uh, let's see, we calculate the length if our length is one, then we're a base case of one item, so we're sorted, and we just return. If our length is two, then we're still a base case, but we're a base case of two items. So we have to see if the left item is bigger than the right item, then swap. I'm using this swap, op this swap uh, function right here to do my swapping, because it's super convenient. And that's it, we swapped the two items, now we're sorted, 
and we return. So those are our base cases. Uh, so let's see. If we're not a base case, then we split our... That means we're bigger than two en entries. So we split it into two and we call twice our own function recursively. And so we sort the two sublists. And then when, when the, those two functions return, the two sublists are sorted. And it's time for us to merge the two together. And this is our merging algorithm right here. We calculate the left and right distance to the camera for each, for each monster. And then it's really simple. We use the left one if its distance is less than the right one. But there's a few caveats, a few edge cases that I kind of blew past in the video. If our right one is equal to the end, that means we run out of right stuff to use. So we should always use the left one. And similarly, if the left guy is equal to its end point, which is the middle, then we should always use the right one, or in other words, never use the left one. So you gotta take care of these uh, few, oh, why is, it, oh, why is it expected a else, else if, I need an if here, there we go. So we should always take care of those, those corner cases. And then if we use the left one, then you can see our, our output position gets increased and our left position gets increased. This plus plus means just add one. And uh, the right one doesn't get increased in that case. But if we're using the right one, then the output and the right get increased and the left one doesn't. So that's how we're marching through our sublists and tacking off and, and taking off the first one in each case. And then if we've reached the end of both sublists we break from the loop so that should be it both sublists are now sorted we return the whole list should be sorted yeah let's go see how it works let's see if the problem has been solved so here we are in the game again and now you can see i can see the enemies through each other if i come around this side i can also see i can see this enemy through that one that one through this one because the sorting works properly uh, when I'm on this side, the monster closest to me is uh, ahead in the list. And when I'm on the other side, now the smaller monsters are closer to me, so they're ahead in the list. So that's it. Uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.